Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning as we gather around God's Word. The festival that we are celebrating is Pentecost. Pentecost is one of the highlights of the church year. In addition to Easter, when, God, when Jesus rose from the dead, now in Pentecost, the message of salvation is shared among all people. The Holy Spirit works. And so our festival, our celebration of Pentecost this morning, will be recognizing the gifts that God has given. Gifts in song, gifts in his word. We'll follow the order of service as it is on our screens, and we will, after our opening hymn, have a baptism to begin our service. So we'll open with our first hymn. That'll be him 308. 303. Now I ask the congregation to please stand. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. 
Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ to his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Congregation may be seated. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson from God's Word this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 11, and this portion of God's Word will serve as the basis for our, or the text for our sermon this morning. We read, Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 51, the second part. You can find it in your hymnals on page 87 or on the screen. Thank you. 
Our second lesson this morning is the account of the day of Pentecost. And so we hear from Acts chapter 2 what took place. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Please join with me in speaking our verse of the day. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from John chapter 15. Jesus says, When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We'll continue with our next hymn, hymn 176.
Grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you have big plans? Do you have lots of things that you want to do for the weekend and things that you're looking forward to in the summer? Maybe they're a big trip, vacation that you've waited all year for. What do you do when you have vacation? Do you, do you make sure that you have everything lined up or you just say, hey, let's head out one direction and we'll get there eventually? What about plans to get stuff done in the summer at home? Do you have to order supplies? Get tools? Or do you just start knocking down walls so things start ending up the way you want them to be? What about personal goals? Are you hoping to be more calm in your life? Are you hoping to be more dedicated or more certain of what you're doing? You just hope things turn out? Or do you have to work at it? You see, there are lots of things that we want to do in life that call for a scheduled, planned, purposeful trip. They can be large and even small, but they take effort and they take direction. In our Old Testament lesson, we have effort and direction. We have plans to carry something out, but the purpose is off. Recall how God had saw what was becoming of the world he had created where there wasn't anyone who was focused on what he had said, so much so that he could only pick out one family, Noah, and his sons and their daughters, or their, their wives and his wife, so that God had to start over because no one was looking at what God had said or cared about him, and he protected Noah so that there would be a new life, a new plan, new purpose on the earth. He told all the, the survivors from that flood, be fruitful and multiply and spread out across the entire world. Why? Because he wanted his name to be shared in every place, not just in one location. And he wanted this message to be shared again and again and again through family after family after family after family. What happened? It didn't take that long. In fact, some Bible commentators say oh, even under 100 years before this group of people that were moving from place to place decided, you know what? We like it right where we're at. We don't want to go out and spread across the world because then we're going to have to keep starting over and over and over again. Let's just stop here. Good plan. Their purpose is off. They wanted to make a name for themselves. So they said, right here is a good place for us to take advantage of everything that we have and settle down. And then on top of it, when we build this huge monument, when we get to this place where we have done this wonderful work, we can let everyone else look at us and say, oh, wow, how good they are. You know, that kind of spirit, that kind of idea has not changed in this world. People are constantly looking for ways to get themselves ahead. And they'll come up with all kinds of reasons of why they need to get ahead in life. Reasons that deal with, well, I just want to sit back and relax in my later years. I don't want to have obligations and things. I just want to be able to enjoy what I've done. Some people say, well, I want to build up such a life so that everyone else remembers me, so that when I'm gone, my name is still known. Still others in this world tell you it's about what you feel right now in the moment. Get the most that you can out of life, no matter what anyone else says, because you're the most important thing. Enjoy life. Don't worry about anybody else. And if that wasn't only a worldly thing, we'd be okay. If that was only a worldly thing, we'd be okay. But that also affects us as Christians. 
There are times in which God gives us wonderful gifts. And we start to look at those gifts and say, well, you know what, if I, if I hold on to this much, I can give whatever is left over here to God. And then, then at least I'm giving something to God, but, but I need what I need first. We don't do that just with resources. We do that with our abilities. God has given me this particular gift, and man, I love and I enjoy it, and I want everyone else to notice me in it, but don't make me take time out of my schedule to do that for others. Don't let others tell me how I should use or not use that gift because I want to see it, and I want to, I want to benefit from it. Sometimes even a congregation of believers starts to think about, well, this is what I think is best, and everyone else must have to line up with me. Instead of when we look at what God is doing for a congregation or a church. You see, there are all kinds of ways that God has blessed us and given us gifts, and it's easy for us to say, I want this. Look at the verses of our text this morning and see where it is that these people are searching for that. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. They were almost okay. They found the opportunities that God had given them, but then they said, let's see what we can get out of it. Let's see where we get the advantage. Let's see where people will notice us. And so as they planned to build... Their focus wasn't on what God had directed to. Their focus was on themselves. You see, the danger of going through this life, looking for the things that get me pleasure and get me advantage and get me good things, is that I see them as what I have earned and what I deserve, even so that others might take notice of me. When we look at what we have opportunity that God has given us to do, we don't want to build things that look to ourselves. Those things crumble and fall away and do not last. But look at it, what God has done for us. When everything was exactly the way he wanted it, when God created the heavens and the earth, he gave mankind everything they needed. And yet, Adam and Eve took advantage of God and thought they wanted more. When God had every right to say, all right, you're done, that's not going to work, he says, I'm going to pay the expense so that you have salvation, so that you can know who I am. And so he doesn't just say, I'm going to wipe away your sin. He says, I'm going to actually pay for it. He sent his son Jesus into the world so that our sins would be absolutely and totally paid for. Jesus suffered and died where we deserve that punishment for eternity. You see, our plans reach for ourselves and yet God gives everything to us. And notice the tender care that he goes to in, in looking at what his creation has done. Look what he does for the people that are here in this tower. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speak in the same language they had begun to do this, then nothing they plan will, to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Now what we have here is a description of, of God by man's standards. God doesn't have to come down to any location in order to see what's happening. Throughout Scripture, we're told how God knows everything, and so he could have just said, that's it, and zap. But instead, he shows his tender love and care for his creation so that he interacts and looks at it, sees what they are doing. Then he recognizes their end result. 
If they are to continue on this path, they can do anything they want that will be turning away from God and they will lose salvation forever. So God comes in to intervene. He goes into this life of these people that have turned against him and deserve nothing. Instead, he provides a gracious response. I'm going to set them back on the path that I had directed them for. So easy it is for us to see what we think is best for ourselves that we fail to take into advantage what God is planning to work. Do I want what is going to be beneficial to me or am I going to bring glory to God in what I do? What do we want to build? But that building is not just physical structures. You see, the Tower of Babel, the reason it failed was because the people's hearts weren't in it. The people's hearts were focused on themselves. But God again comes to us with his means of grace. He washes away our sins and baptism. He gives us his word so that we might know him better and give him glory in how we use our gifts and talents. How we might use what he has given so that others can hear the gospel. So that we can use our time not to gain for ourselves, but so that others will benefit. You see, he wants our hearts when we build. He wants us focused on his glory as we live. And as God interacted with the people at that time, he also interacts with us. The Lord scattered them from over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it's called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. At first glance, that sounds like the most horrible of condemnations. But really, God was directing them back to what he had given to them so that the whole world would know what he was doing. In fact, what God did at the Tower of Babel was now brought to completion at the day of Pentecost. The reason we celebrate Pentecost is not a day on the calendar, but because God sends his Holy Spirit to each one of us. And we have the opportunity to be a part of this building of his building within us and his building within others and the building outside of these people that are gathered here today. What are you building, dear members of St. Paul? Look at what God has given to you. Look at the blessings that he has and then give them to his glory so that he's seen in how we act and what we speak and even yet what we build. God receives the glory when we build to his glory. Amen. Please stand. I keep asking that the Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Amen. Let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, when you open your hand, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. May your name be praised and your grace glorified. Today we remember with joy the gifts that you provide for us. Again and again you pour on us all that we need for daily life, health, strength, companionship, and all our material blessings. We thank you especially today for the gift of music that you have given to us. We thank you that it is a vehicle for the gospel. We thank you also that every good and perfect gift is from above 
coming down from the Father of the heavenly light. Yet we are sorry that we get greedy and are ungrateful. We are sorry that we complain and worry. Please forgive us, dear Lord, for these and all our sins in the name of Jesus. Prevent our many blessings from becoming Satan's trap to ensnare us. Keep our minds on things above, not on earthly things. On this day in which we give thanks for the musical gifts that you have given to our congregation, continue to pour out your spirit on us. O oh Lord, fill us today with great appreciation for all the wonderful gifts that you have given us. Let us praise your name in glorious song. Amen. And now hear us, Lord, as we pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next hymn, Hymn 596. We pray. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We close with our final hymn, hymn 332.